Oh, hello. I didn't quite see you there. I just finished going grocery shopping, and you know what I bought at the grocer? An onion. Now, why did I buy an onion? Well, because onions have layers, and they're organic. But do you know what else has layers? Ogres. Ogres have layers. You see, that's why today we're talking about Shrek, Hassle at the Castle for the Game Boy Advance. Now, I go back with this game a bit. I was nine years old. I loved Shrek. I had all the merchandise and movies. So, like any boy living in the States back then, I went to GameStop and I was like, wow, they have a Shrek game for the Game Boy. And they had one in stock and it was in the case. Then some asshole kid cut in front of me and bought instead. That bastard. But that's okay, because maybe it was for the better. Maybe it was a sign that I shouldn't have bought this game anyways. Let's take a look at this game and see if this game's any good, or if it'll make you look dumber than putting your finger and your thumb in the shape of an L on your forehead. Let's go. Everyone remembers Shrek. This ogre was everywhere with four films all of varying quality and various spin-off movies, toys, memes, breakfast cereals, and of course, video games. This one in particular I found at a local game store for $3. Then, shortly after I began writing this review, I lost that cartridge and bought another off Amazon for $5. And right before recording this review, I actually found that first cartridge, so I hope this game is good enough to deserve owning two copies of it. God help me. With a title like Hassle at the Castle, many would, at first glance, believe this game is an original Shrek adventure. Instead, it actually follows a plot of the first Shrek movie, albeit in a more condensed form. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So, as for story, you like Shrek? Good gonna like this game. Since this game's release in 2002, the years have started coming they haven't stopped coming. Thankfully, the graphics on the whole look pretty good. They've aged remarkably well. There's so much to do and so much to see here. They can be nice and colorful when they want to, and the game isn't afraid to use some nice scrolling from time to time. Yes, that is parallax you see, ladies and gentlemen. The character designs themselves are pretty nice too. Well, for the most part. Shrek himself appears to be a bit of a hunchback. Oh, and the music is pretty nice too, even if there's only like five tracks. Now, I can hear many of you saying, James, you asshole, the game might look good, but does it play any well or are you just wasting our time? Well, random asshole on the internet, I'm about to answer that. On paper, Hassle on the Castle should be very easy to control. It's a typical 2D beat-em-up platformer. D-pad for movement, one button jumps, one attacks, and the attack button can be held down to run. Top left of the screen, there's a power meter, and if you fill it up all the way and press the jump and attack buttons at the same time, you'll do a super move. You also have heart containers you can collect to re refill your health, and there are coins scattered throughout the levels, and if you collect 10, you get an extra life. Yeah, 10. That's awfully generous. Now this game may sound like it would be easy to control, but in execution, these controls are worse than Shrek Forever After. Let me put it like this, as soon as you jump into the first level of the game, Shrek hits the ground running and my god, he doesn't want to stop running. He controls like he's on ice. This, of course, makes jumping to small platforms or really any form of platforming particularly annoying. Then there's the issue of jumping. In a normal platformer game, let's use the original Super Mario Brothers here, press the jump button and you immediately jump, not taking any sort of lag caused by playing said game on a flat screen TV instead of a CRT into account. And Shrek has to at the castle, you press jump and then the game waits a second and then Shrek jumps. It has this weird delay and it's very disorienting and as someone who actually beat this thing, I can honestly say you never get used to it. There are two other playable characters here. Donkey, who you unlock in the second world, runs about three times faster than Shrek does and can headbutt enemies. So as soon as you can play as him, ditch Shrek and tell him to go back to a swamp where he belongs. This is my swamp. Unfortunately, Donkey is still plagued by the same slippery movement controls and delayed jump controls. So I guess you could say, Donkey controls like ass. And finally we get to the beautiful Princess Fiona, locked away in a castle for years, deeply desired for immense beauty. She's pretty much just an amped up strap. I'd say always play as her actually, if you know, if you're available for more than two stages. You know, you have so few opportunities to actually use her in the game, it makes you wonder what the point of even including her was. Oh well, at least you can still blow up a bird by singing. 
Actually, on a side note, can you imagine being able to do that? I know some people can shatter glasses by singing, but this girl can blow up a fucking bird by singing. She can kill things with her voice. Maybe Fiona wasn't actually a princess, but was instead stealed away because she was some sort of secret Nazi super sound weapon killing machine or something. Or less dramatically, maybe she just had a powerful gift that she has to learn to control. Control. Oh yeah, control. The poor control in this game may have been excusable if the levels were designed around it. Some levels require precise platforming. Fuck those levels. Thankfully, those are in the vast minority. The vast majority of levels are mostly flat, save for the occasional obstacle. Even when flooded with enemies, these stages always end up feeling bland tedious and very, I guess, samey. The only level I can remember distinctly off the top of my head, well, besides the one where Fiona blows up a fucking bird, is the one where you're escaping from Dragon. That's mostly because of how fucking infuriating that level was. This big scaly abomination chases you through the entire stage and is shooting fireballs at you and thanks to the slow slippery controls and the tight platform that's required, you'll die and die and die, then die some more. Look, we could all use a little change, but not like this. Then there's all this poor design of this game that is mentally exhausting to play. I forced myself through every slog of a stage of this game to try to beat this for you guys, and let me tell you, it was difficult. I had to take a break every other world because I was bored. This game is worse than a bad game. It's a boring game. Outside of a few infuriating stages and some just really weird ones, this game is the epitome of the word meh. With Hassel at the Castle, all that glitters isn't gold. It sure doesn't break the mold for Game Boy games. Honestly, the only thing this game will end up breaking is the player spirit from immense boredom. How disappointing. This game managed to fail to meet even my incredibly low expectations. It tries some interesting things and it has some weird quirks. And if you run across in the wild, it ranges for about two to three dollars, but I'd still pass on it. It's a game that honestly, you'll try playing it and you'll be like, well, it must get better, but it doesn't get better. It's not equal to some of its parts. And I don't even think that analogy makes sense. In a way, it does make sense by not making sense because this game doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how they could take a solid concept and try some interesting ideas, but then overall, just fuck it up. Thank you and good night, ladies and gentlemen. Keep going. I, I bought a random onion. I, I don't know what to do with this fucking thing.